bees love to swarm in the spring. They swarm almost any time of the year um, that it's warm, but the spring is especially good for swarming as the bees are starting to build up their populations. Um, perhaps the beekeepers aren't getting in the boxes quick enough and, and the swarm cell gets uh, past their, their keen observation. And as a result, they have their, their high swarm. We had our, one of our highest swarms today and we went ahead and caught the, uh, the bees from it. And we want you guys to come along and, and see the journey as we go through it. We have a swarm coming out of the hive. I don't see where they're going to yet. We'll uh, find a spot and then maybe try to catch them. Okay guys, so as you can see, the swarm has found a tree and they've uh, bunched up there into our swarm. You can see it kind of right here over my shoulder. Um, this is a, a standard hive tool. It's something that's very useful in working with bees. Um, but when you're catching a swarm, you really don't need it. Uh, the only thing I've used this tool for today is to clean up the box that we're going to put them in. Um, as you can see, this swarm is uh, pretty still. It's very, very quiet. Um, they are not looking to sting. See, I can get like right up next to it. Pretty much touching some of those bees there. And it's not really, uh, really bugging them at all. They're not looking to attack me. They're looking to find a new place to, to, uh, to find a home. So if this was an Italian set, I would do this, um, catch this swarm without the use of a, a bee suit. But since these are cannolian, or however you pronounce that big long word there, um, they're a little bit more aggressive than normal, so they might try to sting once or twice when we're catching the swarm. So I will put a suit on for this one. All right, so here's the swarm. And here's my setup to catch them. And we've got our bottom board. That's this board that comes right across the bottom here and on the inside there. Right in here, we have an entrance reducer. I have it set to the lowest setting right here. Then we have a um, feeder. I will get some sugar water in that. And so the bees will have a source of food when they come in here. These frames have been cleaned up a little bit. We had some wax uh, worm damage there, wax moth damage. So we just scraped that off with the hive tool and got everything cleaned up. Um, these uh, frames that are black, they're older, older frames. Um, here's some that's probably last year's stuff um, where it's got more of that yellow color. When they first make it, it's yellow and then it turns black as it ages. Um, this frame, these frames toward the center, we'll use on this one. And then I'll probably pull them out for a split and then maybe clean them up and let them build new wax on them eventually. We have our inner cover here, um, nice and handy. It's gonna be grab and set that right on top once we get those frames in. And then we have our telescoping cover right here and it will come right over top like that. Um, I've got these two straps ready to strap it because this is not where we will leave the, the bees once they're caught. We'll leave them here for uh, probably till after dark and then I'll move them up over to my apiary with the other beehives and find them a permanent spot where they can uh, make their nest. If um, this wasn't so close to my apiary, I would probably be out here with a five gallon bucket and a board to put over the lid and I'd have the, the hive set up over there. I'd catch them in the bucket, put the board over it, take them over, dump them into my apiary and uh, then leave it there. But since we're so close, I'm just gonna move the whole, whole hive. One deep box is not uh, super heavy to move with the bees in it. All right, so we're all suited up and ready to go. I'm gonna hand this camera off to a little helper and we're gonna see about getting this uh, beehive in the box. You ready, Sammy? It's on. All right, let's see if this will work.
as you can see, we got most of them in the box. Some of them are around front, some of them laying on the side over here. Now, what we're hoping is that the queen landed inside the box. You see right here, we got a lot of bees working to find their way in. That's usually a good indication that we did get the queen in the box. So they will go wherever the queen is. Now, as you can see, they've landed all, all on me and things like that too. They are not looking to sting. I would not be standing this close to a hive of bees if they were looking to sting. Even with the protect, protective mm -hmm. stuff on, they'll still get me through. Um, they will sting if I um, pinch one. Like if I catch one in between the piece of clothing or something, it will sting. Um, so here we are. We'll probably see a few of them come back to those branches. Some of them are flying around through here. But looks like most of them are trying to get inside this box. So that's a good indication that our queen is inside this box. So we'll let them calm down for 30 minutes to an hour, come back and check on them. If they've gone inside the box in that amount of time, we'll know the queen's in there. We can put the straps on it. And then later in the evening, after dark, because bees won't fly at dark, I'll uh, come out here, pick up this box, take it over, and uh, set it in its spot in its apiary. But that's how you do it. That's how you catch a swarm of bees. As you can see, these bees are more concerned about getting into the hive and finding a new home than they are about stinging. This is how close I am to them. In the antenna, that one. I'm just sitting there looking at me. All right, so here we are with the bees working to find their way into the hive. Um, you can see they're not interested in stinging me at all. They're interested in finding a new home. They came out of my hive. We happened to see them coming on out at around two o'clock. By 2.30, they had found their spot up there in that tree. And by four o'clock, I had everything gathered that I needed. And we just finished up with everything. It's probably about 4.30. And we will let them climb on in there. We'll put the straps on them. And then this evening after dark, we'll move it to its permanent home. Watching bees can be very entertaining. Say hi. Here we are at night, and you can see the bees are inside there, making their home in there. Uh, I don't want to leave too much light on it because they can't see the fly at night. They are cleaning out all of this junk from inside and cleaning up the comb. So we have ourselves a uh, new hive of bees. And here we are. The hive is now at its permanent home on our post. That's its hive. And then we have several other hives here in our apiary. All right, so we got those bees caught. The um, most adrenaline pumping thing about bees, about keeping bees, uh, working the hives is easy. Uh, collecting honey is, you know, it's a little bit more tricky, but it's, it's still pretty easy. But when you're catching a swarm or when you're installing a package of, of bees and you're dropping that many bees and they start buzzing all over the place, it really gets the adrenaline pumping. So just be prepared for that if you go to catch your own swarm. The swarm we caught today was very tightly wrapped around those branches. So I just shook them off and let them fall. I would have preferred for them to be hanging down a little bit more. We'll uh, put another little video clip here of um, what it looks like a little bit farther down, a little bit more uh, hanging on it. Um, but it was uh, a pretty easy catch. You just pull over the box, shake them off and you're good to go. In God's word, the Bible, it says, go to the ant, you sluggard. God uses the ant, an insect, to give us an example of things that we can build into our life. The ant prepares, it gathers uh, during the time to gather so that it will have food for the winter. It works together as a team. Bees are a fun creature to raise. They're very captivating to watch. I could sit in front of our hives all day and watch bees if I had the time, but we have other things that need to get done around the farm but bees are great examples of gathering during the season of gathering and storing up for the winter they're also a great example of um, working together as a team 
The way the bees work together is uh, astonishing. It's, it's actually captivating to watch them as they literally will hang from each other to, to build their combs. They will um, work as a team. An average beehive can produce up to 60 pounds of honey in a year. 60 pounds from a little tiny beehive. Um, that's, that's a very productive hive. As amazing as the bees are for their cooperation, for their teamwork, for their communication with each other, and living together in such a small space. You realize those beehives that you see on the side of the road with one or two boxes stacked high and a couple uh, honey supers on top of that are home to uh, roughly 120,000 bees in that small space. But they have a relatively short lifespan. A bee can live anywhere um, from two weeks to seven weeks. Uh, most of them were probably in the five to, to seven week range during the season. If they overwinter, they can last four to six months. The queen bee can last up to about five years. Um, but it, overall, it's a really short lifespan. They start their, their uh, life as a little tiny egg and the eggs hatch into little larvae and the larvae grow. Um, they get boxed in and then out will crawl a bee one day. And then that bee will spend the first week or so um, hanging around the hive, fixing uh, honeycombs and fixing um, um, brood and uh, brood comb and tending to the, the baby bees or the other larvae in the hive. And then it will start to be a worker bee where it will fly out the hive um, up to two miles away from the hive um, to gather nectar, to gather pollen, to gather all sorts of other little chemicals and things that they'll use around the, the hive to do uh, whatever they need to do, whether it's honey or, or making new uh, wax for the for their comb or propolis for sealing in cracks and little things like that and just gluing things together um, but five to seven weeks is not a very long time we're not given a very long time either we've got a limited time to do the things that god has asked us to do so what are we going to do with the time that he has given to us just like the bee is diligent to do the task that god has laid out for it you and i must be diligent to do the task that god has laid out for our lives we hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you want to see more content like this, then go ahead and like and subscribe, and we will do what we can with what we have around here.